Doug needs to find its weakness. If you eliminate this column, essentially you're making a cantilever out of this beam. When the support columns are removed on one side, the I-beam becomes a lever on which the upper floor is pushed down. The I-beam will pry the opposite side of the tower up and away from the Balmoral condos. The real key is the timing. How long do you wait to get the maximum pull from it on the rest of the building? You will see these walls actually jump in because we're using the weight, we're using the construction to control the fall of the building. It's cool. You'll like it. Doug's plan requires that the team start loading the hotel tower with explosives. But before they can start, Mark confronts a bureaucratic hurdle. We cannot load. Hopefully they won't get a restraining order. The neighbors file a complaint with city council. The town of Bal Harbor refuses to issue the implosion permit pending further investigation. Mark must decide. Should he wait to see if a stop work order is issued or load the buildings with explosives? It's only three days before the scheduled implosion of the Sheridan Bal Harbor Resort. 230 kilograms of explosives arrive on site, but the town of Bal Harbor is still investigating a neighbor's concerns over the demolition. 50, 50 grain we got. Mark worries about the shaped charges. Explosive devices even more powerful than dynamite. He doesn't want that kind of deadly force just sitting around, and he is legally permitted to load the buildings. Mark makes the decision to push things forward. I'm here to take out a building, so we're loading the building. The crew drills holes and loads dynamite to attack concrete and rebar. The hotel tower also contains steel columns. Weakening them requires something more powerful than dynamite. If we taped a stick of dynamite to this column, all the energy would go away from it. You'd knock the rust off of it. 